Could we maybe just start with Aaron and Chelsea and whether you have an update on the health of those two? Um, for now, we're just waiting on um, tests and so whatnot. So, uh, yeah, there's not much I can say on it. But, yeah, we're hoping they can get back to you. Um, is Chelsea closer than Erin? I know Doc said we'll just test Erin and see when she's good to go. But perhaps Chelsea would be closer. Do you know? Um, I'm not too sure. I guess we're just waiting to know until they're 100% fitness ready. So I guess we'll just see who comes first. Okay, no worries. And um, look, another brilliant performance. Could you just talk to us about the mood in the group and how you're feeling? Do you feel like you're untouchable at the moment, the Crows? Um, no, we're definitely touchable. We got that loss against um, Western Bulldogs. Um, but yeah, the girls were super proud of their efforts on the weekend. And yeah, I think we're just glad to get the win in the end, even if it was only by a few points. What does it mean to you momentum-wise? Um, it just means we can run into the finals um, with a few wins under our belt. Um, yeah, we're just super excited to come up against Collingwood this weekend. Hopefully we can get that in two as well. And how big a factor is belief and momentum for you, do you feel, and your previous experience in big games when you head towards the, the business end of the season? Yeah, I'd say confidence and belief is like a huge impact on games. So. Yeah, if we've got those wins early in the season, um, yeah, we just have a huge belief in the finals and know we can get it done. Beautiful. Thanks, Tia. I'll let someone else have a go. All good. Uh, Liz from the Tizer, please. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Danny. Hi. Tia, how are you going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Um, from a team perspective, what was the most pleasing thing about the win on the weekend? Um, I'd just say, obviously, we weren't quite playing our football in the first half. So the fact we could come back, restart and end up with the win in the end. Um, yeah, we're just proud of our efforts. And yeah, we just came um, through with it in the end. So yeah, I guess coming from behind was a good achievement for us girls because, um, yeah, we don't usually do that. So yeah, proves we can come from behind and win in the end. For you personally, you had a career best 18 touches. Um, what are you enjoying about uh, your second year with the Crows and, and are you happy with where your football's at? Um, yeah, I'm super happy. I'm loving being in the midfield a lot more, obviously getting around the football a lot more as well. Um, yeah, I'd say I didn't even realise I um, had as many touches on the weekend. So, yeah, I'm just happy where I am at with my football and hopefully can keep growing through each game. Um, you just did mention, because that was going to be my next question, you've moved more into a midfield role. Can you talk us through that? Um, did you ask Doc for more midfield minutes or is that something he's seen in you? And what do you enjoy about being in that in that part of the ground? Um, so last year I played um, a few minutes in the midfield, so I was getting a bit of a taste of it. And um, yeah, just pre-season this year, Doc said, where would you like to play? And I said, I, I would love to get more minutes in the midfield. And um Lucky for me, that's ended up happening. And yeah, I think I'm just enjoying the midfield a lot um, more than the forward line, I guess, <laughs> even though I'm not kicking as many goals. <laughs> um, and I think Ebony and um, Anne Hatchard, they both got uh, 30 plus touches. Um, I think that was an AFLW record that uh, for two people on the same team to get more than 30 touches. What's it like being um, teammates with those two and what are you learning off them? Um, I'd just say they're both very reliable players and we know um, they can just perform um, every week. So, yeah, they're amazing players and obviously playing in around them in the midfield is awesome because I get to learn a lot off of them. And, yeah, hopefully I can pick up a few things from them. I think with your seventh win this season, it now officially means that you've qualified for finals. Did Doc allow you all to, you know, have a little high five moment about that on the weekend or is it straight back to business? Um, I'd say, yeah, we kind of celebrated a little bit um, straight after the game. But once we're back on the plane, back home, we kind of, yeah, reset and said, you know, we still got to keep winning to try and finish as high as we can on the ladder. Uh, like you mentioned before, you're playing Collingwood this weekend. They're a bit, um, they're two of their stars down who've both done ACLs. Britt Benici was uh, confirmed today. But obviously, um, playing Collingwood, you're not going to take them lightly, are you? No, definitely not. Um, they were a tough contest last year in the last round, so I imagine we'll be coming up to the same sort of contest as well this year. And Noffy's 50th, what does she mean to the team? Oh, she's a big impact in the team, obviously. Um, a big character and we all love her. So, yeah, it's super exciting. She's playing her 50th game this week. Excellent. Thanks, Tia. I'll pass over. Awesome. Uh, Max? 
Hey, Taya, thanks for doing this. Um, I wanted to ask you a question I'm sure you don't really want to answer. Do you guys feel like you are the best team in the competition? Um, I don't think so. I think we just know that, you know, we put in the hard work in the pre-season and obviously we've tried to get as fit as we possibly could. So hopefully in the end, um, we come out as, um, yeah, the fittest and best. What do you like looking at the ladder with, with such a short amount of time to go? Are you the sort of person that looks at it quite often and does all of the maths in your head about what can happen? Yeah, I very much um, yeah, look at the ladder. Um, I, obviously, this year, I think it's really going to come down to percentage. So, um, yeah, each game, we obviously want to score as much as we possibly can to boost our percentage and hopefully, yeah, like I said before, get on top. Your percentage is massive at the moment, which it does put you in pretty good stead. Is it something that gets talked about throughout the year? Like, do you ever have a half time or anything like that where things are really going your way and it's it's reminded you are reminded to to put your feet down? Uh, I don't don't think it's a very serious thing. Um, obviously, we don't really want to take away from um, how we're playing, but I guess the d- joke does come in every now and then, just boost the percentage. But yeah, it's nothing too serious. Thanks, sir. Good luck this week. I'm good. Thank you. Josh from Nine. Hey, Tao. Um, I know you're spending more time on ball at the moment. Do you, do you need to sneak forward and remind some of the forwards how to kick straight? Probably the only downside your last couple of weeks. Look, I actually had an opportunity on the weekend to kick goal and I kicked another one of the points. So I don't think I'm any better than our forward line. <laughs> <laughs> have you um I know Doc said you, you put in a bit of work um after kicking I think 15 behinds against the Giants put in a bit of work in the lead up to the Frio game is that is it a concern though the inaccuracy it's probably I mean you're, you're flying in most areas is, is that a little bit of a concern at the moment um obviously we would like to be kicking more goals and points um but obviously we don't want to put too much emphasis on it because we still got to play good fit football and start from the middle there Sure. What have you noticed is, is the biggest um, challenge in playing sort of more predominantly on ball like that? How much are you noticing like in terms of the, the energy that you're spending and, and how knackered you are at the end of the game? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's obviously a lot harder in the midfield, but we obviously get plenty of rotations in. But yeah, I'm definitely noticing the difference between the forward line and the midfield. Uh, you mentioned that the Bulldogs lost before. I mean, it looked like you were maybe on course to, to a, a perfect season before that. Was that was that the sort of reminder or a wake up call? Do you think for the group looking back at it now that you know we are vulnerable here and and if we don't bring you know the, the right intensity every week, we're, we're not just going to walk up and win. Yeah, I feel like it's very easy to like get it too ahead of yourself, especially if you're just um, getting those wins on the board. So I think yeah, Bulldogs were a huge wake up call, and I think personally, every great team needs to have a, a loss in the season. So. Yeah, hopefully that helps us in the long run.